Hey guys, we're gonna have a little bit of fun here today. I went on Amazon and I purchased the cheapest lithium iron phosphate 12 volt battery I could find in the range of 100 to 105 amp hours. So I'm not sure how you pronounce the brand name of this one. It looks like to me, uh, GL Unin would be a correct pronunciation. Um, this was listed for sale at $367, and with the shipping cost and taxes, it came to $423 delivered to my door. And also something interesting is about two days after I placed the order for this battery, once it had shipped, uh, the company that was selling these, the listing is still on Amazon, but it's now listed as out of stock. And then around the same time, the same company has a new listing on Amazon that is now $50 more expensive and it's missing one particular feature. So a little bit on the specs of this battery, like I said, it is a 100 amp hour battery. It is 12.8 volts nominal, which is 3.2 volts per cell. It has a charge specification of 14.6 volts, which is 3.65 volts per cell. Both of those are very standard parameters for lithium iron phosphate. And the maximum charge and discharge rate is 1C or 100 amps. On the back of the battery, we just have some warnings. Taking a look at the top of the battery, we can see the positive and the negative post. We also have this little LCD display here, which says battery capacity voltage. Um, and this is the, the feature I said was missing from the new battery that was $50 more. So on that new battery, the entire case looks the same. It just does not have this display. So I don't know, we got a play button there. Well, it says it's 100% charged. I see this play button switches between voltage. We're at 13.9 volts, 24 degrees Celsius. This uh, strap for lifting, you can see how it's connected here. This is one thing I noted was identical with many of these batteries for sale on Amazon that were around the same price with different brand names. Um, and uh, here's the bolt that's used for connecting to the battery. This is an M8 bolt. It does look a little bit short. So it's approximately 9.5 to 10 millimeters in length. I would have preferred to see a longer bolt because once you start getting a lug or a ring terminal or two under here, you're not going to have many threads left to grip into this stud here. But I do like that this is an M8. Most of these batteries are coming with M6s or M4s. All right, and this is set to approximately 120 watts, which is the limit of the AC input adapter I'm using. All right, so I stepped away for approximately five minutes and I see the charger shut off already after 34 seconds. So it only put in 0.75 amp hours. That means they shipped this battery to me full charge, which is interesting because that is against uh, the shipping regulations of lithium batteries, which I believe is to ship them around 30% or so. All right, so I've got my standard capacity testing set up here using a batrium shunt to meter the amount of power going from this battery. We can see voltage, amperage, wattage, amp hours, and watt hours. Finally picked me up some new light bulbs. It's difficult to find incandescent light bulbs in the stores anymore. i uh, probably have to look online to order some, but these are 100 watt light bulbs that only use 72 watts. Uh, so I've got three of these and I've got one 40 watt light bulb which comes out to 256 watts uh, or a 0.21 C rate which is perfect. Uh, we're going to leave this run until we reach low voltage disconnect of the BMS in the battery or the inverter shuts down and we'll be back to see what our final capacity is. All right guys, so we're at 52 amp hours discharge. That's slightly over 50% of the capacity of this rated battery. And I noticed that the little display on top of the battery is still showing 87% capacity remaining. So I'm going to guess based on the price point of this battery that there is not a shunt or some sort of metering device inside. And it's probably making that estimate based on the current voltage, which is very unreliable and an inaccurate way to report estimated capacity remaining on a lithium iron phosphate battery. Uh, so we'll check how that works when we open this up, of course, but it is something I wanted to note before the test concludes. All right, so we shut down here at 98.7 amp hours, which unfortunately is just over two amp hours short of the rated capacity. All right, so unfortunately this case does appear to be glued shut. It's not uh, closed with screws or some way we can open it like most of the batteries I reviewed. Just heat it up with my heat gun a little bit and see if I cannot loosen up the glue under here. We'll see how that goes. All right, so I did have to end up cutting into it uh, quite a bit here, which is uh, disappointing, but I think I got it loose enough to where I can open it. Oh, what? They are pouch cells. They're not cylindrical or aluminum case prismatic. The only compression they have on each side is this uh, filament uh, fiber tape, whatever you call it. There's a piece here and there's a piece here of this reinforcing tape. And to hold the batteries into the enclosure, they actually filled it with spray foam the whole way around the battery. All right, so looking at the uh, lid here, we can see that little display is simply connected to the negative and the positive. 
there is no shunt or anything so it is reporting those percent of charge uh, values based on voltage alone so you can see the uh, lug that goes on the terminals here it is a copper lug but it's not crimped it's just actually soldered this wire is soldered into this lug so I don't really like that I can feel the solder has wicked back up a little bit and it's kind of uh, you know that actually forms a fragile point on that wire then this is 7 gauge uh, silicone insulated wiring so it's 200 degrees Celsius rated so I don't think I'm going to be able to get this out without uh, completely destroying this case so I guess that's what we're going to have to do because I do want to have a look at the BMS which is stuck right to the side of the battery there so alright guys so I can't really get this battery out of here it is it is glued in there very well with this foam um, I can't keep stabbing at it because I'm risking damaging the pouch shells and I certainly do not want to do that. You can see on the top here how they, they folded these tabs over and they actually soldered them and uh, I certainly would not consider this to be good by any means. This is a very poor uh, build quality here. So essentially what we have here is a 4S2P. So there are eight cells here. They are in groups of two and then each group of two is then wired in series to give us uh, 4S or 12 volts. So that's why there's this big cluster of solder here. Uh, this is actually four tabs connected together to do both the parallel and the series connection. Uh, we can see here how they affix the positive wire onto the aluminum tabs. So I, I don't personally think this is going to handle 100 amps very well, but... Uh, so I'm going to remove this BMS so we can take a look at it off of the battery. I did remove one of the uh, lugs here that was securing the 7 gauge silicone wire uh, to the terminal on the inside of the battery. And you can see this, this lug was originally one that was intended to be crimped with one of those uh, B-style crimping tools. I'm not sure what you technically call it. But they just squeezed the tabs over and then they soldered it. So it's kind of crimped and soldered. This BMS was attached to the side of the pouch cell with this cardboard-like material and a very thin piece of double-sided adhesive. So on the BMS there are a few screws, six screws that hold on this uh, aluminum heat sink cover here. BMS actually looks pretty nice. I'm kind of surprised. So we can see with the part number here. This was manufactured in March of 2021 and it is a 120 amp BMS. So the BMS is properly rated for the battery. There is a somewhat uh, thick copper bar that goes across the top here and the uh, negative lead is soldered on there. It looks fairly decent actually. The BMS layout looks clean. It's all nicely organized. I don't see any damaged components or poorly soldered things. Typically what I look for and look at these BMSs are components that are off-center, soldered poorly, improperly, you know, giant globs of solder, that sort of stuff. Uh, this one's not soldered as cleanly as the other one is, but it still doesn't look too bad. Uh, there is a single temperature sensor, which is affixed to the uh, FET transistors down in here. So while this did indicate in the Amazon listing the operating temperature was from 0 Celsius and higher for charging, my guess is that this does not have low temperature cutoff, being that this sensor is attached directly to the MOSFETs, that wouldn't make sense because it's then going to be picking up heat of the uh, transistors operating rather than the actual battery themselves. Alright guys, so I think this is a good example of why you don't pick the cheapest battery you can find on the market when you're looking for a battery for something. I was definitely thrown off guard when I opened this up and saw these flat pouch cells. I had expected for sure it was going to be aluminum case prismatics based on the specifications of the 1C charge and discharge. And you know, I have nothing against using these flat pouch cells like this, it's just that you know, they, they aren't compressed at all. They're just kind of like in here with two pieces of tape around holding them together, and that's just not acceptable. Um, the BMS was stuck right to the side of the pouch. There is maybe a, a fraction of a millimeter piece of adhesive tape and a piece of cardboard between the BMS and the pouch. So, uh, so whenever that BMS is doing anything, especially if you're charging or discharging at 100 amps, it's going to get pretty warm, and it's going to be dissipating that heat directly into this battery. Other than that, I did think the BMS looked pretty good. You know, the wiring could have been a little bit thicker, but it's not bad. I mean, even the balance leads, these are actually uh, silicone insulated wire. This isn't cheap wire either, so. Uh, unfortunately, it does appear I damaged this battery while I was taking it apart. Um, I'm not sure where exactly, but it is damaged. So I'm going to have to discharge and recycle it. That is very unfortunate considering the amount I paid for it. Uh, however, I do go into these things knowing I could potentially damage something when I rip it apart. And that is why I began doing capacity tests before I start taking stuff apart. Uh, this battery was definitely not intended to be serviceable. It was glued together very well. So, uh, But yeah, based on how these tests went and seeing how this is constructed, this is not something I would recommend purchasing. I would certainly encourage looking at an SOK or uh, the Big Battery Owl is a pretty good battery as well. Or just a more trusted brand name. Don't just 
go on Amazon and pick the lowest price battery you can find. But either way, this was an interesting test. It was interesting seeing something different for a change. Please hit that like button before you go. And thanks for watching.